This is my hopefully quick tutorial about working with the selective color dialog. Um, I'm going to start just by making my background saturated, just so we have something nice to work with. So I'm duplicating my background layer, calling it saturated, and go switching into lab color. Uh, don't worry about flattening your image. Unless you're working with transparencies, uh, it's not going to be a problem switching between modes. I'm pressing Control M to bring up curves. Uh, the A channel, I'm going to drag this side in. That's green. I'm going to drag this side in a bit too. Try and keep the middle point more or less central so I keep the original colors of my image. But I saturate everything, so click OK. Uh, this is nice, but I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to brighten this because this is a pretty dark image. If I press tab, I'm going to do this. A lot of people recommend doing this in curves. Uh, what cur the way curves works, just as an aside, um, these are your image colors, and these are how they're being outputted. So people talk about, oops, I'll start with an S-curve. People talk about an S-curve increasing contrast. Well, that's kind of a deceptive way to talk about it. What you're really doing is you're taking this point, which is this shade of gray, and you're telling it to output as a darker color further down here. And you're taking this point up here, and you're telling these light values to become even lighter. And because this incre has an increased slope, you, you add more contrast. But of course, that's not what I want to do. Um, what I really want to do is just brighten up the whole image. Well, because it does a curve, well, you can see that every value has gone up a little bit, and that brightens up my image. Uh, but I don't quite like the way this works because I think that some of my darks uh, could be a bit brighter. So I am going to do this in levels. Uh, inside levels, this middle slider uh, is obviously your mid-tones. This is your light values, and these are your dark values. Um, you can see that this has a spike down here at the darks. I'm just going to undo that by closing the dialog. You can also hold down Alt and press Cancel, which resets it. Um, and I'm just going to drag my midpoint towards the darker area here. What that will do is that will centralize this when I click OK, which stretches out my blacks and makes them all a bit brighter, and takes my light values and kind of squeezes them. And so that makes it, and that also makes it brighter because they get pushed even more to the right. So that's a lot nicer. I'm going to click OK on that. A bit washed out, but that's OK. So I've got a good background layer to work with. Um, I'll leave these layers here just so we can back up at the end. So I'm going to duplicate this and call it um, Selective Color. So here's your Selective Color dialog. I'm pressing my shortcut. It's up here in Image Adjustments. Oh, why isn't it showing up? Oh, I'm still in Lab Color mode. So Selective Color only works in RGB mode. I'm going to press Alt-1. Uh, make sure you go into Image uh, which is my just my personal shortcut for it. It's up here in image mode. So, okay, here we go. Control Shift B. I recommend adding a shortcut if you have CS or better. Uh, CS, CS2, or CS3. Okay. So what this does is it lets you change any individual set of colors um, inside your image. So if I, for instance, select the magentas, what it's going to do is change the color of these flowers. You can see that these are obviously similar colors here. Um, it helps to know your color wheel, because wh what's the opposite of cyan? Well, I've got it open here. If you look it up in Adobe Help, they have their own little color wheel, uh, which you can use to uh, make this all clear to you. you know, the opposite of blue is yellow, opposite of red is cyan, opposite of green is magenta. So if I go back over here, and I say take out magenta, well, I've taken these flowers, which were magenta, and I've desaturated them, because I got rid of that magenta. If I, for instance, just, just let's, I'm going to try and make my B pop out because these flowers are pretty distracting, which is okay. But if I make them pink, so taking out a bit of magenta and adding a bit of yellow, that should make them. Yeah, it's a nice shade of pink, <laughs> and maybe brighten them up a bit as well. So I took these flowers and I made them uh, this kind of pinky color. And I'm going to take reds because these down here are showing up as reds instead of magentas. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take out magenta, maybe add a bit of cyan, which is, which will make them less red, um, and add some yellow. And so the only problem with this 
is that apparently my B was somewhat yellow, and so he's being affected by this as well. Uh, somewhat, not somewhat yellow, somewhat red. So I'm going to have to uh, add a mask and paint out my B at the end of this. But that's, that's kind of nice. I like what this has done to my, my flowers. Um, another thing I'll do is take my grass, which appears green, um, but isn't. <laughs> Greens are really this dark shade of green. Anything that's kind of light green like this is actually yellow. So if I select my yellows and try again, um, I'm going to take out magenta, which will make these green. And you get this kind of crazy green color. Uh, to combat that, if you add some black, you get this very dark, um, kind of grassy, earthy look. Which is nice, uh, but you won't, don't really, really don't want to overdo it. I'm also going to take out some of the yellow in them, so that kind of tempers it a bit. Just just fiddling around. That's that's what I recommend. Uh, that's kind of nice. I know it's changing my B a lot, but I'm not worried. Okay, so that's that's good for now. If I click OK. Oh, also the difference between relative and absolute is huge. I don't quite understand how they work, <laughs> but I know that I rec I recommend using relative instead of absolute. Absolute will um, well, again, I I don't know how the I don't know the math behind it. Um, I've just been told by people much smarter than me that relative is usually the way to go, and you can see that that's also fixed up my B a lot here. Um, but it means I can go back and do a more severe adjustment to my making these a bit more pink and a bit more white maybe. Okay, so that's good. Click OK here, and you can see I've just changed my very saturated picture and turned it into this um, much more temperate uh, photo. So I'm going to add a layer mask and just quickly paint out my B using a brush. Um, black uh, erases and white um, includes on a mask. So just carefully, with a soft brush, brush out my B. Try not to add too much more magenta back into that flower behind him. And you can see I've taken a nice image and I've made it look like crap. But, <laughs> if you can kind of understand how it works, you know, for instance, oopsie, select this, control shift B. Uh, right now I could take this, take my whites, for instance, and add magenta into them so that they look a bit more like this flower and less like a uh, white highlight. Um, I could take my magentas again and take out even more magenta make them, you know, kind of these white, this white color. Or if I added more yellow again, we added a bit, then I can try and make them look pink. Uh, I'm going to take my reds, add yellow to my reds, take out a bit more magenta, maybe add magenta even. There we go. And there, now you've got a nicer red shade of this, and it's also helped out my, helped out my B a little. Anyway. Uh, that's the selective color tool. I realize this is a very all-over-the-place kind of tutorial. Uh, I recommend playing with it. Uh, it's really useful if you want to change someone's shirt color. If you have an image with someone's shirt, you can uh, just you know select the color, like maybe it's a red shirt, uh, and you know change, just just fiddle with the sliders, and you can make a a lot of cool changes. Anyway, that's my tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it.